And now to address you and I is our popular host, Mr. Sonny Siegel, in his segment called Who's Who. Mr. Siegel is the CIO of Montgomery County, Maryland. In each of his segments, Mr. Siegel presents the international cream of the crop personalities. His guest of honor this morning, none other than Ambassador Pradeep Kapoor. Welcome to the Who's Who Show. This is your host, Sonny Siegel. Today, my guest is Ambassador Pradeep Kapoor. Ambassador Kapoor is in country these days here in the United States. He's on the faculty at the University of Maryland and at the School of Public Policy. Soon we'll find out what occupies Ambassador Kapoor's time and his vision for the future. Welcome, Ambassador Kapoor. Thank you very much, Mr. It's Siegel. a privilege to have you on my show today. Our viewers are varied, you know, in their ages and their interests. And since you have such a wonderful background, I thought it would be appropriate to ask you how you would recommend people who want to be in foreign service to prepare themselves? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I guess this is uh, probably one of the most interesting and challenging jobs anybody can uh, think of. And I recommend it very, very highly. And if you have any interest to work for your country, to work for the world, to work for issues which are important for the citizens of the world. This is probably the best job that anybody can dream of. I tell all the young diplomats from wherever I meet that they should aspire to be very hardworking diplomats because this is one area they can contribute very significantly. And particularly in a country like India, this is a, one of the best jobs in India and being an Indian diplomat is a very interesting job in the world because of the role that India is playing and will play and continues to play on the world stage. But that does not mean that uh, other countries have any lesser role. Every country has a very important role in the Comity of Nations. So I would encourage very strongly a lot of people who are thinking of what their career aspirations should be what their ambitions should be, to seriously think of this as one of the main focal aspects of uh, achieving, of trying to achieve, of aspiring for. And because jobs, um, any job, and of course yours on the world stage, pose challenges, I wanted to ask you, when in the process of contributing so much to India's relations in Chile, Cambodia, Nepal, France, Tanzania, and Spain, and other countries, uh, what were the, some of the larger challenges you encountered? Uh, this job has inherently a lot of challenges because you're working in a different culture, in a different country, in a different setting, language is different, the thinking is different, the traditions are different, the customs are different, the norms are different. So you have to be very sensitive, you have to be a person who can adapt, who has a lot of empathy, who has a lot of capacity to learn, to listen and if you have the interest to learn languages, all the better because if I have to communicate with any leader of any country and if I do the communication in his language, he is going to be listening much more closely. Whereas if I communicate in a third language which is neither his or mine, that does not have the same impact. So that is another aspect. But the challenges which are there are of uh, many areas because uh, for example in Cambodia, it was a country with which India had more than 2000 years of relationship. And then there had been a break, the 
country had been colonized by France and then India had come in to restore some temples there. A lot of issues had arisen, there was a lot of difficulties and when I joined in Cambodia, no leader from India had visited Cambodia at the level of Prime Minister for example for the last 50 years. Oh, I see. So, relationships which had been strong for 2000 years, Indian uh, interactions with the Southeast Asia are the greatest example of soft power diplomacy in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. So, every Southeast Asian country has so much in common with India and uh, within the region and there has been so much of osmosis. You see the religions, Hinduism went from India into the whole of Southeast Asia. Thereafter, Buddhism went from India to the whole of Southeast Asia. To the extent that even a lot of the Islam which you find in Southeast Asia or the Christianity which you find in Southeast Asia, a lot of the preachers went from India to impart those religions there. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of the traditions, customs, festivals, marriage ceremony, rice plowing festival, water festival, they are all very similar to what we have in India. Right. So, to have a break like that and in a country which is so important and so strategically relevant for India. So, I had to come to a situation where there was very little happening and suddenly we tried to increase it notch by notch and then we had one visit by the Prime Minister, then we had the India ASEAN summit level dialogue partnership, there was another visit by the Prime Minister, we gave a huge number of lines of credit to Cambodia. Mm. The economic relationships boomed, the cultural relationships boomed very much because the Angkor Wat area is the main earner for the economy of Cambodia. Yeah. And we, from a point where we were not even present in the 38 countries who were working there to restore Hindu temples and some Buddhist temples, and India was not present at all, though India was responsible for the creation of most of these temples in the first place, Indian architects sculptors, scholars, archaeologists, yeah, centuries anthro ago. anthropologists. Yeah. So, finally we were able to move step by step to a point where the biggest project for restoration and conservation of any monument in the history of the world is being done by India and Cambodia. So, on so many fronts we were able to change the landscape completely because of the possibility to discuss with them talk with them, ask them what are their difficulties, what are their requirements. So, it is uh, been very challenging on so many fronts, mm -hmm. but what I would like to say here is that uh, it is a very interesting uh, aspect of life to work as a diplomat and as Indians and as non-Indians, you, you should think about it because we have though just as a matter of uh, aside an anecdote, when I was looking after the relations of uh, India and ASEAN and dealing with our joint commissions. We had this joint commission meeting between India and Singapore and Delhi and there was a Singapore delegation and the Indian delegation. Singapore delegation we had Kishore Mehbubani, Professor Jai Kumar, the foreign minister of Singapore and was, was Professor Singapore, Jai Kumar, Singapore delegation. But they were mostly Indians. Yes. So, the Doordarshan person comes up to me after a while and he says, sir, the Doordarshan is the Indian television like the GTV. Right. And he said, uh, sir, when is the Singapore delegation coming in? <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a large very, number of uh, diplomats from different nationalities now working across borders. So, even in the US embassies abroad, I always see some names which are of Indian origin or other country origins. My nephew is working in the US diplomacy, US foreign service. I see. I see. Well, so, he follows you as a role model. Well, yes, you are right because he came and visited us as a kid mm -hmm. and he saw the work which we were doing and he got so inspired that he thought that it is one of the better jobs. So, he worked very hard to and get into it. And very coveted. Very coveted. For all the years that my uncle was in the Indian Foreign Service. Um, uh, Ambassador, I do want to say that I have personally visited Angkor Wat and saw the signage that said that this was a joint India Cambodia project for restoration. I also should acknowledge uh, the publications that you have uh, actually authored. Uh, Taprom, did I pronounce that correctly? That's correct, absolutely. Uh, A Glorious Era in Angkor Civilization, then India of My Dreams, 
that was a 2008 publication, and then Connecting World Heritage Sites and Civilizations in 2014. So this is remarkable. What a contribution <laughs> you are making to, to the globe. Yes. And you're, I'd noted also that besides being ambassador to so many key countries around the world, and now being here in the U.S. as visiting professor for the second time, uh, you got your education at the IIT Delhi, another premier institution, both your uh, undergraduate work and your master's there. Then you were a research fellow at Oxford University. So you had been getting world exposure all along, <laughs> even in all your foundational years, if I may say so, preparing for bigger office and larger contributions. Yes, that has been useful. Indeed. So now to the... Um, to the transformational leadership and practice of developmental diplomacy. Well, what does that really mean, the De developmental diplomacy? Uh, well, there's just one point which I'd like to clarify before we get on to that aspect about, uh, you have mentioned about all the other aspects of work, but there's also the economic work which is very important for any ambassador, for any diplomat, the trade related work, mm -hmm. the political work, the security work, the strategic aspects of work. So in Chile, for example, our trade was $1.2 billion when I joined there. Nice. Uh, when I finished my tenure, we had increased it to $3.3 billion. Oh, wow. Triple. The, yes. We had uh, the preferential trade agreement, which had about uh, 277 items in the list. By the time uh, we were through, we had negotiated very hard. And it's also very important to negotiate with your own country because many times your own country is also a very difficult uh, uh, bargainer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they are not willing to put everything on the table. Yeah. So you have to convince them and you have to keep on pushing them. And we were able to finally come to an agreement of more than 3,000 items from less than 300 items in the preferential trade agreement, which will now increase the level of our trade uh, many times more. Mm -hmm. The number of scholarships which we were giving to Chile, fully funded scholarships by the government of India was very small. And when I was joining Chile, I was told that it is going to be zero from now because Chile has joined the OECD group of countries. I see. And developed countries. I said that Chile is the furthest country in the world from India. And this is one of the links which we have, yeah, which is very strong. Long link, yeah. Very important. Long link, yes. And if we have to have Chileans studying in India, it, they are our ambassadors for India, in Chile for the future. Mm -hmm. So we must not cut it down, we must increase it further. So from 17, we made it 20, 25, 35, 40. And then I also requested some Indian philanthropists in Chile to institute some scholarships to learn culture in India. So we kept on expanding the scope of our relations. And then there was a CELAC group of countries which was formed mm -hmm. of all the Latin America, Caribbean and uh, Central America. Now, so we, we will have to understand this further, perhaps in, in a later <laughs> segment. Uh, but I see your, your interests shift with the world's priorities, right. you know, and, and you serve so wonderfully wherever the need is. And of course, you're thinking the long term. I want to thank you for being on the show today and hope to have you back on the show another time very soon. Thank you yes, very much. Thank you very much. One point which I would just like to mention is that you're talking about the long term. There is the uh, University of Maryland which I'm working. Yes. What I want to discuss with all of you is the possibility to set up an Indian Center of Advanced Studies at the University of Maryland and I need your support and help for that because that is very important in the capital area in the Washington DC metro yes, area. Yes, that would be so appropriate and it is very, uh, very much, uh, it very much belongs here in the Washington capital region at the University of Maryland. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is your host Sonny Siegel signing off from the Who's Who show on the Capitol Forum. I hope to see you next month at the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm.